Can I get a show of hands who does physics? Almost all of you. For those of you who do physics, we need to unlearn a couple of things. For those of you who don't do physics, just a couple. For those of you who don't do physics, we need to learn a couple of things. Now, the first thing we're going to need to learn, and these aren't directly related, but force equals mass times acceleration. So hopefully you guys know this one. All right. For those of you who do physics, acceleration is often gravity, and we call it G. And in physics, you um, make G a fairly specific number, 9.81 something or other. In maths, we say it's approximately 10. So there's your first unlearning. If it's not specified, it's always a really good idea to actually say what you're assuming, but more often than not, they'll assume 10. We measure gravity because it's an acceleration in meters per second squared. Okay, so it's the change of your velocity every second. Um, what else do I need to know? Mass, if acceleration is in meters per second squared, which we often write like this, and mass is in kilograms, you'd think that force would be measured in kilograms times meters per second squared. And it is. But we came up with another terminology for that. And those of you who are physics, what's kil one kilogram per meters per second? One newton, which we abbreviate to one n. The next big things that we need to know in our very, very brief physics lesson is that if we are not moving, everything needs to be in equilibrium. That means all of our forces must balance. What that's going to look like for us is the sum of the forces, and I'm deliberately going to do this one in X, and then I'm going to do another one in Y, the sum of the forces in the Y direction, are both equal to zero. If we are in equilibrium. So the last little tidbit I'm going to say before we launch in today's lessons, uh, how do you know you're in equilibrium? When nothing's moving. Excellent. When nothing's moving. So if we've got something that's hanging and not moving, it's in equilibrium. If we have um, a block on an inclined plane and it's not moving, then we're in equilibrium. If it is moving, we have a whole different set of rules because our forces are clearly out of balance, but we can bring them back into balance to find out how much they're moving. Finally, and I won't write it up because we've done it before, we have um, displacement and velocity are both vector quantities. Why are they both vector quantities? Direction and? Magnitude. magnitude. Okay, we're getting the hang of that. Their magnitude has a specific name. What is the magnitude of displacement? Distance. Distance. And what is the magnitude of velocity? Speed. So we have their scalar equivalence. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to do three worked examples and then set it off to you. I'm going to do, the first one is going to be about displacement and velocity. The second one is going to be about a, something hanging, which is a very, very common situation. And the third one is going to be about an inclined plane. And given, if we have time and depending how we're going, I'm going to try and do that one in two ways. If we don't have time, the second way will be up on my notes on Canvas pretty much as soon as we're finished and I get back and manage to put it up again. All right, so in our first worked example, 
And these are fairly common in different forms. But in this worked example, we have Matt, and Matt is rowing a boat across a river. Now the river is 20 metres wide. But rivers don't stay still, and this particular river is flowing at 3 metres per second. And because we're in New South Wales, rivers flow towards the east. Not always. Okay. Matt can row at four meters per second in still water. So we've got a scenario and they'll often be given to you in a lot of words. So can you imagine Matt sitting in his rowboat, river's going that way, he wants to go that way. Which way is he actually going to be going? He's going to be heading that way. Do you agree? Because the river is going to be pushing him down. Okay, so we know that he drifts horizontally. What we want to find is um, where will Matt end up? If his start is taken as the origin, and how long does his journey take him? Now, I find sometimes when you have a very structured one of these questions, often you've answered subsequent parts before you answer previous parts, and that's fine, all right? If you've done working previously to get somewhere because that's the way your brain worked, and you've answered part E, you can say from above, here's my answer, and you don't need to show any more working. If it's relatively unstructured, which this one is, we actually need to put some framework around it for ourselves. And what's the first thing I always suggest you guys do? <laughs> yes, yes, and? Yes, diagram. We're talking vectors. There are two vectors on the board already. What are they? Three meters per second towards the east and four meters per second, we're going to assume north. And so we should probably write that we're assuming we're crossing the river north. We'll do that in our diagram. So I have a river. How wide is my river? 20 meters. I have a vector diagram. Here's Matt starting at his origin. And he has two vectors. The first vector is, oh, I'm going to draw it in different colours. First vector is him rowing at four metres per second. I have a direction, north. I haven't specified that yet, so let's do that. Shouldn't write it like that, should write it like that. My vector north. And then I have a vector east. Now, because I know where I'm heading with this, I'm going to top and tail them. Why would I want to put them head to tail? Because my next job is to do a resultant vector or a re vector resolution. This is the direction he's actually going in. Do you agree? We're going to call this his velocity. So we're going to call it his velocity vector.